smells like a hospital in here. Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So this is probably going to be one of the last videos I do in this room because obviously I'm hoping to be moving very, very soon. Uh, I'm recording this over the Christmas and holiday period. So uh, I have a couple of videos that I can share with you just after the new year without actually having to film anything over Christmas and leave my family. Um, so today I want to do uh, an experiment. Uh, I have a black Dilusions art journal. I have some Distress Ink, some Dilution sprays and some archival links and I want to see how they're all going to react when I use bleach. Just bog standard household bleach. So we'll have a play, we'll see what happens and then I'll join with you again at the end. So this is my black Dilutions journal. This is the, the bog standard um, 8 inch square black journal and I have a small bowl just with a very very small amount of household bleach. So this is just the very inexpensive stuff that you can purchase from any supermarket anywhere in the world and it's just the sort of stuff that you dump down your toilet or your sinks to get rid of stains and that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do is just a couple of experiments using the bleach on the dilution journal. I'm just going to take a cosmetic sponge. So I've just got a couple of the cosmetic sponges and I'm just going to soak up a little bit of that bleach into the sponge. Now I'm hoping that the bleach doesn't start to dissolve the sponge. I have a little bit, I'm just taking off the excess just so I can show you what I'm doing and I'm just taking off the excess just to make the sponge have a little bit of that fluid on it and then the experiment I'm going to do is just going to stencil with the bleach through onto the black page below. Now hopefully, if I am correct, I am hoping that the bleach will react to the paper colour of the journal. Now the Dilutions Black Journal is not solid black core. If you tore one of the sheets it started to take the colour out of the sponge look. Um, if you tear one of the black sheets it has a, um, a lighter coloured core. So I wanted to see just exactly how the bleach is going to react. Now as you can see look it has started to... Um, now I don't know whether this is the actual colour from the stencil which could be, it could be colour from the stencil, or it could have started to affect the sponge. So I'm now going to lift that off. And hopefully, now you can see something started to happen. Now I've got my heat gun, so I'm just going to give it a quick blast to see if I can accelerate what's going to happen. Okay, so there is a little bit of colour shift. Oh, and I have a fairy puppy that's just arrived. Mr Bentley, are you going to come and sit on the chair? Just excuse me a moment. There we go. Oh, let's clear a little space for him on his big chair. There you go. Hello baby boy. What are you doing? Can you say hello? I'm going to say hello to everybody. Got a visitor. There you go. Can you say hello then? Sis? Let me smell the bleach. Is that what it is? You're looking out the window. You're looking out the window. You smell the bleach. It's not nice, is it? No. <laughs> you off. Okay, bye. Okay, so. Where were we? So that's with the dots. So let's try something with a bigger pattern. Let's find another stencil. 
I'm only going to use, don't care, I'm only going to use the Tim Holtz layering stencils, mainly because they're just easy enough to easy to use. I'm going to use a clean stencil, a clean piece of sponge on this one. And then just take a little bit again and let's see what happens this time. I'll just do it lightly. Don't go too heavy. Because it does look like there's a little bit of seepage. Just see what's going to happen now. So again, the sponge just started to discolour, but again, I don't know whether that's colour coming from the residue of what's already on the stencil. It could be affecting the archival ink or colour or whatever it is that's on the stencil first. It seems to be drying quite quickly. Obviously, the bleach is soaking into the page. But again, we'll get the heat gun on it and we'll see exactly what's happened. Now let's see if there's any transformation here. And it looks as though I haven't got enough of the bleach in there. But it is starting to affect the colour. Okay. So let's try something else. Even bigger area this time. So again, taking the sponge. Let's see what we get. I'm going to lift it. It is soaking straight into the paper. It's not even sitting on the surface. So let's see if we can create a little bit of a pattern. I know there have been other people that have used bleach um, on projects with dilution sprays or distress ink. So I just wanted to know whether or not you could use it directly onto the paper. It's just going to be a splodge there. Look. Okay. And again, let's just see what happens. That's probably gone straight through, so no pattern there. So there is a little bit of a ghost pattern. Okay, so yes is the answer. It does affect the page, it does make it go lighter, so it does bleach away the colour on the paper on the Dilusions journal. But not to such a great extent that you get a similar sort of effect that you would do if you just use white paint. So is bleach good to use in the Dilutions journal? Probably not. I don't think I'd bother. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab a piece of scrap card and I'll just put that to one side and then bring out this piece of scrap card. I'm going to grab some um, distressing. So let's just pull maybe fire brick, and if I've got one, there we go. I'm just going to use the same. Uh, I've got a spare sponge here, so actually, let's just put some of this ink on here. Mm. Take some of that and then just apply it to the page. This is watercolour paper, a watercolour card. 
So all I'm going to do is just add some of this colour. Now distress inks are water based. I could use a blending tool but I haven't got one to hand at the moment. I've run out of uh, the circular foams or clean circular foams. Just waiting for a new batch to arrive but with it being just the holidays just finished deliveries are still catching up from that peak period. I think that'll do. That will do. So I'm going to use the same one now with the five brick. So that's a red colour. So I am aware that I will probably get some purpley kind of overtones. But that's okay. It's only an experimental piece just to see how they're going to react. So let's just add some of that colour here. This probably won't get used for anything afterwards, so I'm not really being exact with it. This is part of um, play. Now you may be wondering why I'm doing this. It's mainly because I don't know whether you can use bleach in your art journal project. I've seen some people use it, like I said before, but I've never experimented with it myself. And part of learning about what your products do and getting the best out of your products is knowing how they're going to react with each other. So, fire brick and peacock feathers, just on a piece of watercolour card, a piece of scrap watercolour card. Now I have a pipette here. So I'm going to just soak up some of that bleach and I'm going to put some random blobs and already you can start to see that there is some reaction with the colour. So immediately, look at that. How wonderful. Now obviously it's working much better on the darker colours. So that darker shade of red. Ah. Just take another little bit of bleach up. And so the bleach is quite thick. Because this is the stuff that's designed to stick to the sides of your toilet for maximum protection and germ killing. Wow. And look at these effects. So I could imagine that obviously I'm going to just leave that sitting there for a minute, just for that bleach to get the full kind of effect. But how cool is that? Now I should imagine if I put some tissue now over the top of that to soak up the excess bleach, um, it's going to move some of the colour. So what I'm going to do, I'll, I've not actually got any tissue here, I don't think, I think I've run out of kitchen roll, uh, or kitchen towel. Oh, there's some there. Always good to have some tissue handy. Just make sure I've not blown my nose on this first. I know, I know it's gross, but I haven't. Right, okay, so I'm just going to quickly lay it on and then pull it off, if you'll pardon my expression. Now, none of that colour <laughs> is 
coming away with it. Now I should imagine, ah, you see, I'm catching. Yeah, that's got most of it off. Okay, let's just quickly heat set. So, using the bleach in something like a fine liner bottle like this, you're going to get more controlled um, usage. Let me turn that off now. There we go. And that is just with um, distressing. Now, let's see if we can do another experiment then. Let me grab some dilution sprays. I think I have still got some kicking about somewhere. Yes, there we go. And let's use a tangerine dream. And Campso Teal. Uh, as you know, I don't use these very often at all because I hate the way they splatter everywhere. And you can never get rid of it. Okay. Uh, see? I've never used dilution spray look and it's it's blocked. This is why I don't use them. Let's see what else we've got. Fresh line, let's see whether that one works. There we go. This is gonna take an age to clean up now. It will take forever to tidy and clean up. But there you go, right. Let's heat it. Okay, right, so I've just dabbed off the excess. So we're now left with this limey, greeny, bluey kind of affair. Let's just take some more of that bleach. And let's do the same thing again. Let's drop it around and let's just see what kind of patterns we get. Already I can see it has started to affect the blue. Now I'm deliberately running little rivulets. <laughs> It's actually dragging it with it, it's dragging the colour with it. Obviously it's a liquid, so it will transfer the colour. But look what we're getting. Some real interesting results. I think I may be running out of bleach. Nope, there's still a little bit more there. So we've got, oh, it smells a bit different this time them with the uh, the distressing on the other side. There we go. So again, you can see exactly what it's done to the colour. Let's try and move that back. Amazing. All right, I'm just going to grab some more tissue. And let's see if we can try and clean off some of that excess bleach. Now it will be interesting as well. We've already used distressing. So I'm going to do one more little experiment after this one. I see more colour coming off that. Try not to get anything on any furniture. Uh, I should lift the colours off. In the same way that you'd probably get, maybe not as, um, as dynamic 
a reaction. Let's just heat that. So I want to try one more little experiment after this, and then I think So that was with the distressing, that's with dilution sprays. Just grab one of those stencils, just lay that back over the top. Alright, let's take some of that bleach again and see what happens with that. <laughs> I don't even need to wait, look at that. Right, so the bleach is flowing underneath the stencil. Okay, so maybe not as controlled in that way. Okay, so yeah, it works in exactly the same way. Exactly the same way. And you see the brick pattern just emerging through there. Okay, so let's just grab another piece of um, scrap card. This time I want to use the archival inks. So I'm going to grab a couple of different colours of archival ink. So I've got, I'm going to try darker because you seem to get better colours from darker. So let's try fern green and forget me not blue. So I've thrown the other piece of, let's just do it straight on to the watercolour card. Now the archival ink obviously is permanent when dry. That one doesn't just want to stay where it is. So let's just see. I know I'm probably getting a little bit of contamination onto my ink pad but that's okay. You guys are worth it. All right, so that's directly onto the paper. So let's just heat that and let's see whether or not the archive link reacts in the same way. So let's just take up some of that bleach and let's just Deliver some of those blobs. Let's see what happens. So our cab link is supposed to be permanent, whereas the distressing and the dilutions are water-based. Obviously, will move when rejuvenated with water. Well, let's just see whether we can get this archival link to move within our little test piece with the bleach. And it doesn't look as though anything's happening. Yeah, there's a little bit, tiny, tiny bit of movement but it's very, very subtle. So let's try heat it, setting it. Let's try activating it with, get rid of that glare. That's not much better, is it? That's better. Right, let's try it with a heat gun and see what happens. Okay, so let's bring all those back in. So that was with the dilutions. Now that's almost bleach right the way You'd, you'd never be actually be able to tell that there was any colour in there at all. That is your um, Distress Ink. So again, some great colour removal. Archival Ink. So virtually nothing. There is some. You can see there is some movement, but not as nearly as dramatic as the water-based. So, 
our little experiment. Let's just bring the book back in again. So on an art journal page, the Dilusions art journal page, actually just hang on a sec, I've got a little bit of something on there. Better. Right, so the art journal page directly onto the black page. Yes, it does bleach out the colour a little bit, but not a lot. Distressing, yeah, speaks for itself, doesn't it? So if you're using watercolour paper or any other type of card, I should imagine it will bleach. Very, very similar. Dilutions, again, water-based. So I'm beginning to suspect that because it's water-based, you're getting better results than any kind of solvent-based inks or sprays. So there you go. So can it be done? Yes, it can. But you get better results if you use a water-based product. So there you have it, better results from water-based um, water colour mediums. So there you go. So household bleach, yes, can be used in your art journal and mixed media projects. Who'd have thought it? So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of this video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.